Well, with chart toppers like Pickup Man, Third Rock from the Sun, and John Deere Green, and 13 albums, over 20 top 10 singles to his credit, Joe Diffie, ladies and gentlemen, coming to the uh, Winter Show, Valley City, the big concert on Friday night. Joe is with us right now. Joe, thanks so much for taking time to talk with us. My pleasure. Look forward to seeing everybody. Well, it's it's going to be great. And, you know, when we, we found out that it, you were going to be the uh, the headliner for the show, just, you know, looking back on a career like yours, it, I mean, do you ever just sit back and think, man, it, it's been a great ride? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's uh Seems like I've been doing it a long time in one sense, and then the other. Yeah, you know, look back to other times, it's like it's zipped by, you know. So, uh, but I've been very, very lucky over the years, and uh, you know, just uh, just enjoy what I'm doing. Where did it get started for you, Joe? I mean, music was it always a part of your life? I mean, did it come later? When did you really get the bug and know that that was going to be what you wanted to do? Well, uh, you know, I've always, I always loved music, and my family was pretty musical. Um, you know. Several family members sang. My dad <clears throat> played guitar and banjo and piano and all kind of stuff. So I always had kind of an interest and love for it. And uh, but I didn't, you know, until I got out and started singing in different groups and and uh, whatnot. It didn't really hit me that. I, well, I never thought I could just do it professionally. You know, that was a thing. But uh, uh, one of those weird twists of fate. I got laid off from this job I had, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go to Nashville because I. You know, I always loved it, and everybody tells me I'm good, so I'm going to go try it. So kind of how it started. And it just kind of went from there. And, you know, we, we look back at uh, the, the magical decade of the 90s. I mean, uh, you owned it. You owned the 90s, Joe. I mean, you, you know, that was uh, no matter where, what radio station, country radio you were listening to, there was a Joe Diffie song. I mean, that, that had to be just like a whirlwind for you. It was. It didn't seem real at times, you know. But, uh, you know, it was it was a lot of fun, i got to say. And it was, it was a good a good. Uh, time you know, good era there and uh, so glad glad to be a, to have been a part of that for sure and you know the people know you for your for your recording for your songs but you write a lot too don't you well i have in the past i uh, yeah, still write as often as i can uh i've, I've been lucky to have, written, to have written a couple of songs that, uh, that did pretty good uh first one i ever had uh that i wrote was uh holly dunn had a song called there goes my heart again and i was a co-writer on that so you know, all the way up to, uh, I wrote, uh, Jody Messina's Mike Give a Dance Busted with a couple of guys. So I've been, I've been having a little bit of luck there. What's the process like for you when you sit down and you're going to, you're going to write something? I mean, does inspiration just hit you and you think, all right, I got to sit down and write or how does it go for you? Uh, I can't, can't it, it, it various ways, but 90% of the time it's probably, Hey, uh, you want to write tomorrow? Cause most of the songs are co-written, you know? And so, uh, or, or somebody will have, you know, a, a guitar riff that just kind of keeps going through their head. Or, but most times it's, pl- it's a planned, you know, sit down session, and uh, it's, it's a craft. It's what it's part of it is, and part of it's inspiration, and uh, and uh, there's a lot of craft uh, craft work going on there, you know. The the big uh, release of uh, Jason Aldean's song 1994 when that came out, and all of a sudden uh, he's name checking a bunch of your songs, and you're like the uh, the focal point of the whole song. What was your initial reaction when you first heard that? <laughs> I was like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> 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 but uh, but you know, no, it's, just, it's been a lot of fun. I, um, honestly, just like I've got a career boost there. You know, it's like all of Jason's fans are. We're coming out to see who that guy is that Jason's talking about. So we've had a big time with it. Uh, good crowds, and uh, it's, it's, I'm amazed that, that uh, all of them know every song. So apparently they've done a little research, you know. Now, did Jason contact you ahead of time, or did somebody tell you that that was coming, or did you just hear it? How did you find out about it? Well, I heard Thomas Rhett's version first, That's because uh, he's one of the co-writers on it. And uh, so that's where I, I knew about it. So I was in contact with him, and then... So he texted me and said, you ain't going to believe this. I said, all Dean's going to cut that thing. I'm like, you're out of, you're kidding me, man. So the next thing I know, he says, you ain't going to believe this. They're going to make it a single. So anyway, I did kind of find out ahead of time. And and as, as more direct answer to your question, Jason's producer called my managers and uh, discussed it with them and asked if, if it was cool, if I was cool with it. So, yeah, it was great. Well, and, 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 you know, as of late now, you've been, you collaborated with, with the Georgia Boys. Now, this is a totally different uh, kind of spin on, on what we're used to hearing out of you. Right. Yeah, it was a, it's kind of a, kind of a fluky deal. I've been, I've been writing a bunch of songs with new artists, you know, like Tyler Farr and Tate Stevens and, you know, Brett Eldridge and whatnot. So, uh, 
my managers again. They they called me up and said, "Man, there's a group out of Georgia and they're doing pretty well on YouTube and all that stuff." So, would you be interested in writing with them? I'm like, "Well, how do you know?" Sure, I don't care. I'll try it. So we sat down and wrote this song called "Girl Riding Shotgun," and uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I thought it was a cool song. Didn't you know? I was like, "Well, that's different. We haven't ever done it before." And next thing I know, this record label got all excited and and uh, wanted to put it out and all this stuff. So we got a video and. And we do, we've had fun with it, but it's probably a, a one-off for me. I don't do a whole lot of that stuff. So, I mean, you're on the road right now, obviously coming to uh, Valley City to the Winter Show here on Friday. What, what's what's next for you? you writing stuff? you Are going to be releasing anything new? What's happening for you? Uh, we've always got stuff in the works, you know, <laughs> as every artist does probably. But uh, I've been writing songs, trying to trying to gather up a few to maybe do an album. And, uh, you know, at, at the stage of my career, it's like you have to, you kind of have to, like, you know, no big labels are knocking on your door, so you kind of have to, you know, open doors yourself. So uh, just do that. We're doing that, working on some TV stuff possibly, and uh, just all kind of stuff, really. Well, we are, uh, again, we're just so excited to have you coming up on Friday. Looking forward to a great show, Joe. Hey, well, I appreciate it, man. I look forward to it, and uh, always love, always love coming up there.